Everyone, hi. Bruce Muffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another musical breakdown. Tonight, we've done his work before. I think the guy is great. Uh, the artist, J. Cole, and the song is Let Go My Hand. You know, once again, I found so much symbolism in this song, and a lot of it related to me in my own life, being a father. And he brought up a lot of different perspectives about himself in different areas that I want to get into and talk about. And once again, just really talk about the importance of fathers and how relevant they are and how having a strong father, a present father, means so much in your life. All right, here we go. He does a great job setting it up as a drum beat, and you know his words are very staccato to force you almost like to stand to attention when he starts off the song. And I really like how he did that. Now he goes off like this in, in, in the verse. He goes, sometimes as always, you know, I take out the lines that I think are the most significant to me clinically and go from there. I want to just clarify that. Sometimes I question whether this blank matters, putting substance into something in a world so used to instant gratification. I love that. It, it kind of defines me what I do in my daily life and my, and my whole existence. You know, the world wants everything like right in their face, really, really easy. Is putting in the time and effort really worth it? My answer to all of you that are listening is never mail it in because people figure it out real quickly. I don't care what job it is. I don't care what your role is. People can tell when you're just mailing it in. Be in the moment, be real, be persistent, do your job. Once you start to slack, trust me, everyone knows what's going on. You're fooling nobody. So he's talking about himself, like I'm putting substance into something in a world so used to instant gratification, meaning I'm, 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 I'm living my music, I'm, I'm, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. Never, never cheat your audience. Never, ever, ever cheat your customers. Never, ever, ever cheat yourself. So I'm going to tell you on that one. Okay. Then he does this. I like what he said here. He, blank doesn't always connect as soon as you press play. At times you got to step away, do some living. Let time provide a new prescription, giving true revision. Perfect. Tracy Ross, the daughter of Diana Ross, had a great comment about that. She's an actress, and you've seen her on Blackish, other shows as well. She's pretty accomplished now. But she made a comment that she's learned as an actress, which is such an up and down field, obviously, much, way more rejection and never getting any kind of acceptance, is you do the best you can on a situation, like on an audition, where you drop off the tapes, where you do your pictures, where you star in this, you work in this. But once you made the effort and a, and a valid, vested effort, let it go. Because a lot of times she says that people will say things to her, you know, it's highly weird, show business. Oh, Tracy, we love you. You're amazing. And as the first of the year, you're our new star for this and for this. And January 1st turns into June 1st, turns into the next January 1st. She said, you can't, she says, I used to let that stuff eat me up. I can't do that anymore because I realize it's out of my control. When it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And expect it to take more time than you think. Just accept that and move on. And it's so true. A lot of times in therapy and in counseling, when I do that with people, like they want instant gratification. They want the answers right now. It takes time to change. I've worked with people, some people for years before it started to click. They had such dysfunction in their life, such confusion, such craziness that it took time to think. What did Bruce say? Oh, I'm in that situation again. How did Bruce tell me to handle myself? What did he say? What were those words that he used? Oh, now it makes sense. I used to get myself crazy with my family, asking for things that weren't realistic. Come on, Dad. Come on, Mom. And I realize it's going to take time, or it may never take time, or it may never happen. No matter how much time I give it, I got to be in control. I got to be calm. I got to be realistic. Things happen when they happen. That's why I tell people, don't look for things short term. It may happen that way. If it does, all the power to you. Look at the long game, the long game, the long game. Every time I do another video, do another live stream, do another training, it just adds more fuel to the fire of what we're trying to accomplish with this channel. But if I thought like after 10 videos, oh, I should be, I should be, you know, so incredible, so amazing all over the world, unrealistic. You temper your expectations with reality. But I like what he said about that. Give things a chance, but make the effort. Do the work. Put in the time. Put in the training. Don't cheat yourself. 
that's what I like about this song so much. Now going down, okay, this is the powerful moment here of these next couple of lines. Today my son said, Dad, let go of my hand. Ooh. Reminded me one day he's gonna be his own man. And my job is to make sure he's equipped. I gotta make sure he's not no blank because blank bound to try him. Wow. Yeah. I saw this in two sections for myself. You know, people often say to me, how do you relate to different people? How do you have a, a knack for like understanding people where they're coming from? I put myself through their eyes, not my eyes. My life is not, not that it's so amazing, but it's different than people I work with sometimes. That's okay. That's, that's life. You meet a lot of people along the way. But I look at it through their perspective, their view of things, and how they process information with things going on around them. And I get it. He's a black guy with a black child, and there's no doubt that his experiences for his child is going to be different than it is for mine. I get it. Totally understand. So as a parent, you're afraid. You're going to have that conversation, as Barack Obama said. I understand that. And I'm not mitigating that with taking that lightly. That's an extra stress that you have as a parent. Someone just said to me, well, do you ever stop worrying when they get to be older? And I said, I wish I could say that. I'd have more hair on my head. Uh, no, the answer is no. You still worry about them. At a certain point, you hope, you, hopefully your kids are going to be functional and not like doofuses. I mean, that's what you really hope for. But um, you do worry. I mean, it's just reality. You want to make sure they're doing the right things. And not doing stupid things and you try and advise them so at the same time also I know as a father myself I've had that moment where I'm holding my kid's hand and he pulled away from me and I didn't go you know all weeping and start crying you know I needed a towel for all my tears it's gonna happen he wants to be with his friends wants to do things without me okay that's life that's also a positive thing as well but there's a couple of times when they were adults where I held their hand and they went, ugh, like, ugh. I said, you have no choice. I'm still your father, you know, big deal. I weigh more than you. And they laughed and they got along with it when, as long as no one was watching and if it was at night. I understand that part. I'm not going to be an idiot about it. But yeah, let go of my hand. I'm ready to tackle the world on my own level. Question I get all the time when I did the father training last week, which went really well, broke a lot of points down, was the comment of, are you ready? Are your kids ready? That's what he says. I love that line. And my job is to make sure he's equipped because the line before, he's going to be his own man. The answer is, have you done all you could for your child and to make him ready? And he's, you know, the answer is no. And you hope, you hope, you hope he's going to make the right decision not get involved in self-destructive actions, not have jerky friends, push himself academically, whatever that's going to be, be a good person, make the earth a better place. Once I had a father say to me, Bruce, it's really painful that I'm going to go to my grave and more people want my son dead than alive and that they see him as a frightening person, as a terror. That's what I raised and I'm going to go meet my maker feeling that way. It's tough. Okay, next point. Then, I like the line. I'm sorry, I want to go back to that line. If I said, now he talks about himself, J. Cole. And it goes, if I said I was the toughest growing up, I would be lying. And I want to take that whole piece and just read it out loud because I thought it was such a strong, you know, section. I had a fear of getting punched when, while everyone eyeing. Add that to a constant fear of dying. By gunshot wound, hey. I get it. It's realistic. The other violent type of endings. I kept a tough demeanor on the surface, but was mostly just pretending. Oh, my God. How many times have I had kids tell that to me? I felt that way growing up. I had to prove myself. Show I'm a tough guy. I'm not a baby. I'm not a punk. I can't be pushed around. Luckily, my bluff was working way more often than not. But sometimes a blank pulled my card trying to expose me for a fraud. With my reputation at stake, yeah, you think like, the, you know, oh my God, oh my God, how do I appear to other people? I was scuffling just to save face. <sighs> you know, as a clinical social worker, I want to clarify this, how people have talked to me about those feelings, about 
trying to prove yourself. Your reputation, are you soft, are you weak, tough guy. Everyone goes through this growing up. Once again, you're forced to play a part. You really don't want to be playing. How many times have I heard that? You know, I never thought that I would get to this point, Bruce. I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean to pull out a gun, pull out a knife. You know, I was, they were taunting me. I punched the guy so hard he fell on the ground, had a concussion, brain aneurysm, died. Now I, I didn't do 25 years of my life, 30 years of my life. Prove myself over what? You know, arguing about a ball club, arguing over who's a better rapper, who you like, who they don't like, arguing over your colors, over your street. I get it. You got to prove yourself, that reputation. And, you know, you, what, the, what happens, I get is, I never thought it would get this far. And I got to deal with the consequences for the rest of my life. And you prove yourself for what? There's a great original Twilight Zone about that, about a gunfighter who just, you know, couldn't do it anymore. Killed a lot of people and his nerves got shot, became an alcoholic. And a guy pushes him around and a guy comes into town, gives him a special potion. He can, you know, shoot like crazy, like, like the old days. Blows the, guy out, the gun out of the guy's hand, knocks him down. Don't call me a drunk no more. Reputation spreads. Ah, he's back. So a guy comes in and says, I want to challenge you. And he, and he says, okay, what am I going to do? I don't want to fight the guy. I don't want to shoot him. Let's go. Let's go. They're in a saloon, of course. And he, the guy who's going to fight him pulls out another little flask of liquid that he's drinking. They both got it from the same person, the same peddler. They fire. Both guys get wounded. Can't fire anymore. Doctor says, you'll never have to fight again, Frank. You're done. And it's a, real, a sigh of relief. I don't have to prove myself anymore. Hockey enforcers. Yeah, for many of them, TBI, brain concussion. I get it, the macho code. I played hockey. I've been in, I was in hockey fights. I get it. I understand that stuff. But there's a consequence to these actions. And people pay the price for them. You don't realize you're paying the price, but you are paying the price when you have to live a shadow of who you really want to be. And then he goes... Now I know too much. Back then I didn't know blank. I ain't no blank. Now I know too much. Ignorance is bliss. And innocence is just ignorance before it's introduced to currency and clips. Man, such a great line. Three, three block line. You know why? Rings true for me. I just turned 58 and I see things now so much more differently than when I was younger. I walk very differently now. I see things on so many different patterns. It's like I'm looking at, at colors. I used to only see, let's say, gray, black, white. Now I see like a multitude of colors and so many choices and so many bad choices. And every day could be fraught with uncertainty. That's how I see things. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm in a minority. Let us know how you feel about that. That's how I see myself. The choices that I make can affect me. I got a family I got to take care of. I got a wife. I got to take care of, I got a mortgage I got to take care of. I'm not settled. I'm not resting easy. I don't sleep well anymore. I'm always worried. I'm always worried. I see so much in my daily life. People just don't know and have no idea. Ignorance is bliss. And you're talking to people that don't have a clue what they're saying. And they talk about this and they talk about that. And you almost want to scream because they're so ignorant about life and have no clue. Ignorance is bliss. But guess what, guys? If they mess up, you are the one that has to clean up the mess in your life. Oh, yeah, what do I know? Hey, I'm just an idiot. Someone has to clean up the mess that someone else makes out of ignorance. Then it goes down like they got the bridge by Bass, and it goes, I could be one to lean on. What does that mean? What it meant to me was I will always be there for you to lean on as a parent. I'm always going to be here. The light's always on. I'm not going to, never going to abandon you. How can we grow? You know, you don't realize that. So many times with family, it's like I say to them, you realize the only person you really can really rely on is your parents and your siblings, your family. And it's like often way too late do they realize what I'm talking about. Family is there for you. Just reach out. Hopefully, I mean, I get it. Listen, I deal in this business. Many families are dreadful, horrible, and useless. I get that. And so that happens. But if your family is approachable, be approachable back. How can we grow any closer? It's said four times. How can we grow any closer, grow any closer, any closer? 
to have a real relationship of love and trust. That's a relationship. Do you love me? Do you trust me? You understand where I'm coming from? Finally, on the last page, you get this from Diddy. He goes, please fill us with your spirit. Keep us forever in the present. Yeah, because you know why? Why, do you, why does he say the present? You can't live in the past. You have to be adaptable. You have to change things. You have to look at things differently. My kids are older, thank God. But I got to see things through their eyes. Where are they coming from? How are they perceiving things around them? What is their worldview? But you got to live in the present for that as a parent, as a father. That is so, so, so critical. And that's what I was bringing out last week in the training. And then it goes the last three lines. For presence makes the strongest fathers. Yeah, you have to be around as a father. How many people do I talk to and work with? And I say, where's your father? Where's your father? It's a national tragedy. Father didn't, didn't show up. Where's your father to give you the guidance? We're not, we never knock single moms, but it's, 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 it's insanity out there. Where is your father to tell you right from wrong? Over and over again. That's why we did last week's training was talking about the need for fathers to be fathers. And then teach us how to lead. Okay, how do you lead? You can't lead from the rear. You've got to be present. You've got to be in the moment. You've got to have a presence. And finally, show us how to love. Yeah, reach out. Reach out. Find out what is needed to learn what is real love. What is real love? And then it ends with the piano. All right, there's a postscript to the story, guys. I want to share that with you. J. Cole did play basketball. He was a good basketball player in high school. And he actually walked on to the St. John's men, well, obviously the men's basketball team in Queens, New York. But he always had a dream to play competitive basketball. And in some of his songs, he, he gives shout-outs to LeBron and Steph. You know, he's a, he's a baller. He joined a league in Africa. I didn't even know, know that even existed. But the NBA started a league in Africa called the Basketball Africa League. He was playing with the Patriots, BBC of Rwanda. Okay, he played three games. He scored a couple of points, had a couple of rebounds. I just saw yesterday he, he flew back home for a family obligation and that's it. Let go of my hand, meaning let go of all of our insecurities. That's how I saw that about let go of my hand. He tried. All right. Did a three-game stand. You know, whatever reason was, he's not staying there. There was some flat for another player, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's a publicity stunt, whatever. The guy tried. Let go of my hand of insecurity. Let go of my hand of self-doubt. Let go of my hand of self-worry. Let go of my hand of what people think about me. You did it. Do it. Life goes by so quickly that so often I have people say, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have done that. Do it. Let go of my hand that's holding you back. Try. Attack. Improve yourself. Impress yourself. That's what I wanted to share when I read that about him going to Africa to play ball there. Great. He had his highlights. They called his lowlights, whatever. He's trying. Good for him. See him running up and down the court. Try. Let go my hand. Let go your insecurities and go do things that you want to do. All right. We're done with this video. I appreciate everybody watching. But take the point I'm trying to make. Don't be afraid to let go. Let go from all your fears, your prejudices, your stupidity that you were taught by others. Take chances. Go after it. And even if it's not what you thought it would be, okay, that, that happens too. You know what you can say in your grave? I tried. I did the best I could. I didn't say I'm going to be a coulda, woulda, shoulda guy. Thank you all for watching. Bruce Moffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. Thanks.